Welcome to the wrap-up on Raceview Network. I'm Keith Stalboris. Let's begin at Horseshoe Indianapolis, formerly known as Indiana Grand. We kick things off with the Quarter Horse Racing Association of Indiana Derby. The public's favorite in the 400-yard test was number five, One Night Too Long. The second choice, the one horse, Rock Candy Blue. Incredible broke sharp. Here comes one night too long. The rail is Rock Candy Blue with Kiss Me at Midnight as they dash past the 220. It's Rock Candy Blue. Incredible. Kiss Me at Midnight. One night too long. Screenshot and on the outside as they come toward the wire, but it's Rock Candy Blue. A two and a quarter length margin separates Rock Candy Blue from one night too long in the QHRAI Derby. The winner was ridden by Giovanni Vasquez Gomez for trainer Jessica Vasquez. Screenshot and a little Louie, dead heated for third. Owned by Campos Family Ventures, Rock Candy Blue is bred in Oklahoma by Randy and Stacy Hill. He's a gelded son of Just Louisiana Blue and the Good Reason S.A. mare, Rock Candy S.A. With this victory, Rock Candy Blue has three wins from nine starts and more than $83,000 in earnings. He completed the 400 yards in 20.035 seconds. The $58,000 Bradford Stakes for older horses was the quarter horse feature on July 13th. The strong favorite was WRS Valentino, who's raced exclusively at Indianapolis and has finished no worse than second in 18 outings. He took the 400-yard Bradford last year and breaks from the 10-hole in his quest for a repeat. We're off in the Bradford Stakes. WRS Valentino broke sharp. WRS Moon in the Wagon, the Gray. For those inside gates, just good reason, SA. Relentless Chick holds the rail past the 220. Here comes on a new note with a bid. It's on a new note. WRS Valentino rallying stand side. WRS Valentino. WRS Valentino. Victory in the Bradford Stakes. Prevailing by half a length, WRS Valentino with his second score in the Bradford, tight for second and third between on a new note and WRS Moon in the Wagon. Veteran Canadian standout Country Boy 123, number four in here, ran well late to finish fourth. Trainer Randy Smith with the top three horses in the Bradford, while Williams Racing Stable bred and owned both the winner and third place runner. Juan Marquez, the winning jockey. WRS Valentino now with 10 wins from 19 trips to the post with $411,000 plus in the bank. Final time for WRS Valentino in the Bradford, 20.032 seconds. The wrap up on Raceview Network is sponsored by Remington Park Racing Casino. With a reminder, the 2022 Thoroughbred Meeting begins August 19th. And by Oklahoma Quarter Horse Racing Association, official representative for Quarter Horse, Paint, and Appaloosa Racing in the Sooner State. And speaking of Oklahoma, here's Oklahoma bred Sassy Savannah, top qualifier to the Grade 3 Speed Horse Futurity at Fair Meadows in Tulsa this Saturday, July 23rd closing night of the mixed breed meeting. Also on the card, the Speed Horse Derby, when this horse, Doc's Dusty Cartel, will go for the Speed Horse Double, having won the Futurity in 2021. So those races plus five other stakes events on tap this Saturday at Fair Meadows. to Canterbury Park, where the AQHA Racing Challenge program was featured prominently on the July 14th card, with three challenge races topping the program. The first of those went around the hook at 870 yards, the Canterbury Park Distance Challenge. The winner of this and all regional challenge races received provisional berths to the Challenge Championships at Horseshoe Indianapolis on October 22nd. The post-time favorite in this challenge event was the five-horse Cole Brewster, 
who ran third in this race last year. The second choice was the hard-knocking eight-year-old, number three, faster than Hasta. Outside, Cold Brewster beginning to roll, and between them, faster than Hasta, here comes Cold Brewster to put a chill over the field. With Gonzalo Gutierrez in the saddle, Austin Watterson's Cold Brewster takes the Canterbury Distance Challenge over faster than Hasta. Bred in Oklahoma by Dustin Cox, Cold Brewster is a son of I'm a Fancy PYC and the thoroughbred mare Crescent Shore. His maternal grandsire is the Ireland-bred Aragorn, a multiple graded stakes winner in the U.S. Trained by Dirk Perry, Cold Brewster now has eight wins from 28 starts and $121,000 in earnings. The Grade 3 Canterbury Distaff Challenge saw the return of Lender 16, winner of the last two runnings of the race. This year, she went off as the public's favorite from the nine hole. And they're racing, and the rich mayor, Linder 16, came out like a superstar. In the center, a political mogul is firing. Down on the inside, a political J. Julia, and after that, it is checker out. Linder 16 in a spine tingler. Linder 16 overcame a light brush, a couple of jumps from the gate, and persevered to stop the clock at 19.56 seconds a new 400-yard track record at Canterbury Park. Conditioned by the reigning AQHA champion trainer, Jason Olmstead, the six-year-old mare was ridden by Edwin Escobedo in her third Canterbury Distaff Challenge victory. She's bankrolled more than $797,000 while winning half of her 32 stars. Bred by Jim and Marilyn Helzer, Linder 16 is owned by Tom Mayer and Richard Tobin. Another horse who's performed well at the Shaco P. Minnesota track is AQHA world champion, Danger. Actually, he performs well at pretty much every track he's been to. But he did break his maiden at Canterbury, as well as won the last two editions of the Grade 3 Championship Challenge. In this year's running of that event, Danger left the gate as the overwhelming favorite with regular rider Cody Smith in the eye. Danger came out beautifully, not so much for Fly the Coop in the Bank of America Canterbury Park Championship Challenge, and Danger jumps them by three in the early stages. It is Danger leading it from Juices Loose and Apolitical Hero, but there's Danger at Canterbury Park. Another Canterbury track record falls as Danger crosses the line in 21.07 seconds for the 440 yards. A masterful hand ride here by Rainsman Cody Smith as Danger wins his 17th race in 29 outings. The six-year-old has earnings of just under $1.7 million. Danger was bred in Oklahoma by his trainer, Dean Fry. He's owned by Fry, Downtime Enterprises, and Billy G. Smith. The third Canterbury record to fall that night happened when Jess Rocketman nosed out Dickie Bob in the Bob Morehouse Stakes at 350 yards. Another multiple stakes winner from the Jason Olmstead training stable, Jess Rocketman stopped the timer at 17.353 seconds. Luis Valenzuela rode the Minnesota bread for breeder owner Lunderborg LLC. Last year's champion three-year-old, Impressum, recently took his act to Los Alamitos, where he was a decisive winner of the Grade 1 Vessels Maturity. Owned by Jeff Jones and Steve Holt, Impressum is trained by Heath Taylor. The regular rider Rodrigo Vallejo was in the saddle for the length and a three-quarter tally. Oklahoma Quarter Horse Racing Association encourages the breeding and ownership of Oklahoma bred horses promotes and protects racing opportunities in the state, and represents our members' interest at the state capitol. Learn more at oqhra.com. Let's go now to Prairie Meadows in Altoona, Iowa for the $102,000 Prairie Meadows Gold Derby at 350 yards. The public's first and second choices 
were the top two qualifiers from time trials, I'm a fancy chick and nothing like you. Here's a relevant fun fact. The previous evening, nothing like you's jockey, Stormy Smith, was inducted into the Prairie Meadows Hall of Fame. And they're off. And it was a good start for I'm a Fancy Chick. Nothing like you just outside of that one. Rushing up now, Taken Jackie is also in with a shot. But it's nothing like you who's forging to the lead. Early surprise, the outside, nothing like you, wins the Prairie Meadows Gold Derby. Bradbury Racing's Nothing Like You adds a second stakes win to his resume with this score under Prairie Meadows Hall of Famer Stormy Smith. Running second was Early Surprise, followed by I'm a Fancy Chick in third. Nothing Like You, who took last year's Grade 3 Valley Junction Futurity, is trained by John Hamus. The gelding is a son of Favorite Cartel and Who's Kissing Carter by Carter's Cartel. Bred in Colorado by Thomas Bradbury and Lisa Beaupre. Nothing like you's final time for the 350 yards, 17.881 seconds. Two year olds were featured on the same card in the 350 yard Prairie Meadows Gold Futurity, which carried a purse of $163,000 plus. Undefeated in three starts, Surprise Surprise was the fourth fastest qualifier and the post-time favorite. And they're off. Surprise, surprise, both beautifully and is quickly out for the early lead. Water or Corona trying to come after that one. Kiki Cartel also broke alertly, but it's surprise, surprise in front. Relentless Summer firing through on the inside. Surprise, surprise, wins the Prairie Meadows Gold Futurity. Bonifacio Kidros guides surprise surprise to a fourth victory in as many starts in the Prairie Meadows Gold Futurity. Relentless Summer, three quarters of a length back in second, while nosing out a legacy of tails. Ed Hardy conditions the Philly for owner Excel Partners 22. Bred in Utah by Macaulay Land and Livestock, surprise surprise is a daughter of Corona Cartel out of first prize Stanley by VF Bred Surprise. 18.193 seconds to final time for Surprise Surprise in the Prairie Meadows Gold Futurity. The wrap up on RaceView Network is sponsored by Oklahoma Quarter Horse Racing Association and by Remington Park Racing Casino. We're glad you could join us for the wrap up on RaceView Network. Stay in touch for the biggest races and fastest horses.